our visit with Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh. He's a retired physician from Somerset, Kentucky, also founder of a national organization called Health Watch USA. And good morning to you, Dr. Cavanaugh. Uh, good morning, Jack. Has the pandemic brought new interest in Health Watch USA? Have you seen any difference? Uh, well, yes. We've got a large conference which we're putting on. It's a webinar, July 15th. Go to healthconference.org, and we have people signing up for this actually around the world. A lot of international speakers and in centering on infection and controlling of this coronavirus. So, yes, we have a lot of interest. To be honest with you, it's hard for us to keep up. I mean, you can only do so much. Remember, most of our officers and members are volunteers, and we can only do so much. This is an extremely busy time for us. Uh, and so is this something that people, you don't have to be a, a physician or a nurse or whatever in the medical field to sign up for? No, you don't have to be a physician or a nurse. There's actually no signing up. It's just getting on our mailing list. As I've told you before, we have very low criteria for membership. We really want to get everybody in, sharing ideas and trying to get correct information out. What is it that Groucho said? I wouldn't belong to an organization that would have me as a member. Uh, <laughs> So let's start at the top. I mean, yesterday, the CDC kind of dropped a bomb in a phone conversation saying that uh, we may have a whole lot more cases than we thought. Can you tell us that story? Well, we don't have the data yet. I haven't seen that. And I think they're still analyzing the data. But what they're saying is, is that they think this virus has gone through the United States with asymptomatic cases and is very, very infectious. Now, previously, before we had these fancy tests, a case fatality rate or your case rates were just based upon symptoms. So now we have this group of asymptomatic people that really people don't know how quite to deal with them statistically and how important or not important they are with immunity. But nevertheless, they can spread the virus. The CDC and the World Health Organization have given some information along the way here that they've kind of had to back uh, up and, and correct themselves on. Do you think they have maybe uh, a, a problem in this country uh, as far as uh, believability? Well, I think the messaging of a lot of the top scientists is being hindered by political concerns. You know, just... Last week, there was a report from Politico how the White House administration was thinking of stifling the CDC. So they're walking on pins and needles. If you talk to the researchers behind the scenes, you can really get what's going on. And they are very, very worried. One of the things that is also coming out is now a second research paper, which really questions the immunity, the lasting immunity from these infections especially in people that are asymptomatic. And that's very concerning. As you know, the antibody levels haven't held in Sweden. They haven't been found to be very high in California. We've talked about this in the past. You had mentioned about the paper that came out of China where you had 40% of the asymptomatic individuals two to three months out didn't have good antibody levels or they couldn't detect them. And about 12, 13% of those with infections now another paper has come out looking at antibody levels 39 days after infection. And again, in about a third of the people, they're not finding very high levels. And these are the neutralizing antibodies. In other words, the antibodies that you need to kill the virus. The good news of all this is that you can make neutralizing antibodies. We know what those are. Eli Lilly is making a serum and monoclonal antibodies of this. And this is what the vaccines are centered around so that the vaccine can actually give you a larger antibody response than what you would get from an infection for an asymptomatic infection, etc. So there's some good news and bad news in this. The worst case scenario was you wouldn't make neutralizing antibodies. That's not the case. But we really do need to respect this virus because the more we're learning about it, the more we're finding about the long term sequela which in many patients, especially those that are hospitalized, it's not very good. Okay, now we've got uh, lots of information this morning. For example, as far as uh, Kentucky is concerned, the governor wants Kentuckians to know if you visited Myrtle Beach, 
that you need self-quarantine for 14 days. We've got a, a handful of uh, states that have gone backwards and uh, to the extent that uh, New York Governor Cuomo asking people if you're coming into New York and you're from these hot spots, as they're calling them, that you need to self-quarantine. I, it appears to me that we are headed back where we started and possibly worse than we started. Unfortunately, yes, especially in these southern states. Texas, Arizona, Florida, California is also spiking. The governors of Texas and Arizona, which at one point were, well, what I'll describe as kind of anti-public health advisements, they've now come around. They're advising people to wear masks. You can now have masks mandatory to have to wear them based upon the cities in these states. Both those governors have been advising individuals to stay at home. So they've come around, but it may be too late. I mean, their ICU beds are filling. In Texas, they are turning pediatric ICU beds and pediatric hospitals into adult ICU beds. And remember that when you get into a hospital, that's what we need to worry about because you can get very sick with lasting disability from this virus. I don't think tracking the death rates at this point are going to be that helpful because older individuals, Jack, such as ourselves, are more careful. We've known how to prevent this virus from getting to nursing homes. These are younger individuals that are now getting infected. And plus, we know a lot more how to manage and treat the patients. Everything from dexamethasone to radesivir to anticoagulating the patients to giving antibiotic serum, proning the patients, all of this you would expect to lower the fatality rate by just 50% if you just had that alone. So I really would suggest that people concentrate on the severity of this illness and staying out of the hospital because these individuals are beginning to develop long-term sequela from this virus. So when they say recovered, it should really be at this point survived. You're not truly recovered until you no longer have to go to the doctor and you're back to normal functioning. So I, I don't want to be negative, but this is a dangerous situation and we still have too many people thinking this is just a flu. We don't need to do anything. We're going to gather at bars and be back to the way life was. We can't do that. We have to start living smartly. And more and more young people are getting the virus and they're not too worried about it because they're going to live forever and they probably will. But the problem with that is, and particularly those who are asymptomatic, they are going to be around vulnerable people, those who are older, those who have type 2 diabetes and heart conditions, etc. And they're going to give that to them and those people could die. Well, and that's correct. And the younger people can get extremely sick from this and wind in the hospital. And they may find that 10, 20 years later, they're not breathing as well as what they should have because of pulmonary fibrosis. There's a chance of getting kidney problems. And there's also this disease entity coming up that they're noticing that called long haulers of people that just have low grade chronic symptoms for months and months and months and have chronic fatigue. So this is something that if you're young, you don't want to get either. You want to be young and healthy. So don't get this virus. Don't think you're indestructible. Dr. Kevin Cavanaugh is with us. We've got the phones lit up here this morning, doctor. But let me do this first. This is from our auto tech service text line. Hang on here. Let me find the right mouse. I've got too many mice uh, running around here. Uh, has the doctor been reading anything about Alex Berenson, the former New York Times reporter? Also, I think some of the uh, Houston area hospitals have come back and uh, restated their status as far as being overwhelmed in the ICU area. Do you have any information on that? No, we don't. They're not reporting hospitalizations on statewide levels. Most of what you see... See, it's from the gray media. In other words, the newspapers and news media. The Houston area are concerned about hospitalizations, and they are concerned about running out of ICU beds. They have taken steps to get more beds, such as their largest pediatric hospital, turning their ICU over to adult patients. So they're stating they're not in immediate danger of running out of beds, but they're taking steps to get more beds, and they're already using those additional beds that they've gotten. So they are in trouble, which is why the governor has changed his messaging. And so is Arizona. And I should add that these rates are skyrocketing upward, which is a big problem in those states. Jim, you're on the air, Jim. Good morning. 
Dr. Cavanaugh, I think I've already had it, and I'm no doctor, so how could I think last winter? But how do I know that? How can I find out if I've had it? Well, it's tough right now. What you would need to get is an antibody test. They're not all that accurate. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of in the same position, and I've been trying to locate an antibody test in Kentucky that would be reliable and so far haven't been able to get one. The one thing that you need to realize with the new data coming out is that it may not make much difference in how you go about your daily life because immunity and lasting immunity from this virus isn't certain. In other words, they're looking at the neutralizing antibody. So if it was a mild case, uh, you may not have lasting immunity more than several months or maybe a year. So you still need to social distance and you still need to live safely. But I'm in the same boat you are, trying to search for a test. Thanks, Jim. Uh, here's a text that's an interesting one from our Auto Tech Service text line. It says, do I understand correctly that if you are asymptomatic, you will not produce enough antibodies to get over the COVID-19, therefore you will always be a carrier? No, you can still clear the COVID-19 virus. Remember, these studies are several months out. Sometimes when people are asymptomatic, in fact, most of the time when you're asymptomatic, you will get rid of the virus and clear the virus after several weeks. In other words, two right. to three, four weeks. So most asymptomatic people will get rid of the uh, of virus. Some don't, but that's on the unusual side. All right, let's go to Jeff. Hey, Jeff. You know, um, Dr. Kavanaugh, I read a, an article the other day. It was a study done out of Britain, 1,600 patients concerning those that had O-positive blood seemed to be less susceptible than those with type A. And I can't think that backed up what, what they had in China. Do you know, have any information on that? Well, I do know that people at the CDC do feel that there may be some genetic predisposition to getting this virus or to severely becoming severely affected by it. And blood type is one of the things that correlates with that. I don't think they have the mechanism worked out exactly why, but they've seen the relationship and they're trying to follow up on that. So that is a real thing that people are investigating. Yeah, all right, well, that's the question I had. Thanks, let's go to Laura. Hey, Laura, good morning, you're on with Dr. Kavanaugh. Good morning, Jack, good, good morning. morning, doctor. Uh, I, I read something on the internet and I've forgotten it since, and my computer's all crapped up this morning. I can't pull it back up. Uh, statistically, people did better if they had had the measles and mumps uh, age-wise uh, shots when it came in. So, so that would be, a, a, what, 30 or 40-year-old people? And that the people who had two doses of the measles, mumps, and rubella shots, which would be, you know, like probably a, a few years younger, did even better. Still, there, there was a bump in the statistics where people did better when those shots came on board. Uh, is there anything we can learn from that? Would it be worth getting a booster shot on any of those? Or do we at least need to be really sure that our kids have been vaccinated? Are there, right. Is there anything that about, shows that the um, anti-vaxxer group okay. is Laura, we're about worse? 30 seconds out. I'm going to let you listen off the air real quick, yeah. uh, Dr. Kavanaugh. Absolutely. Dr. There is research that shows that if you boost your immunity to, to certain viruses, it will cause immunity to be better to other viruses. There is research that indicates that. For myself, I'm going to get a uh, MMR booster, you know, measles, mumps, rubella. And uh, I think that is a good thing to do. Thank you, Dr. Kevin Kavanaugh. We'll talk to you on Monday. Have a good weekend.